Hi, this is Neil Hansen, and I am taking you through a CT colonography. CT colonography can be done for screening purposes for colorectal cancer. However, at our institution, it is usually done for a failed colonoscopy that was done for screening purposes. Uh, in this case, you can see this person has a very elongated, redundant, tortuous colon, and most frequently, this is the case for a CT colonography, as the colonoscopist just was unable to navigate through these tortuous, uh, elongated colons, and thus sent us um, sent them to us for further evaluation. When the patient shows up in the CT suite, we put in a rectal catheter and instill CO2 via an insufflator. So you'll get a call in the workroom that says, I got a CT colon, what would you like me to do? By standard, uh, we usually give them two to four liters of CO2 and take a scout radiograph. Ideally, the scout radiograph uh, shows a colon which is distended with gas all the way to the cecum. Once that has occurred, then you can tell them to scan, flip them prone, and scan again uh, after obtaining a second set of scout radiographs. At the discretion of the attending reading it, if there's suboptimal distension of the colon, then we'll give more, uh, more CO2. I've given up to 10 to 12 liters of CO2 that's more commonly seen in people that either A, can't hold the gas in, or B, have just very enlarged tortuous colons. So when you get a CT colon after it's been completed, it will look like this. It will have a supine set of images, as well as a prone set of images. Stool is differentiated from polyps because stool moves and polyps don't. So if you have a filling defect seen on the supine images, and it goes away on the prone or changes position, you can be assured that's mobile stool. How I read a CT colon, I first start in McKesson, and I look at the colon usually in a gas window, so I'll put it on a lung window, and I'll go through and I'll look at the colon all the way from the rectum, here you can see the rectal catheter is still in, and look at it all the way up through the sigmoid colon. This person has a number of diverticula, and follow the sigmoid colon to the descending colon, splenic flexure, transverse colon, and cecum. I look at it in this gas window because I find that's the easiest one to find polyps in. Similarly, there's been literature that shows that you can find polyps to better advantage on coronal images. So I always bring up the coronal image, put it in a gas window, and look at the entire colon in this view too. Should you see something on a coronal, you can localize it on the axial images by just putting your axial images on the screen. And as long as you have your study linked, i.e. these two little bars here selected, if you double click on one part of the screen, you can co-localize on the other part of the screen. Let's say you were worried this was a polyp. You could double click and it will take you to that exact area of colon and show you on axial and sagittal. It has to be the same exact series, so it has to be the reconstructed supine or prone images, otherwise it won't work. In order to view the fly-through images created for a CT colonography, you'll have to bring up Terra Recon, or it's also called Aquarius Intuition. Once someone showed you how to open that up, once you find the patient, you just simply click on the prone axials, hit control, the supine axials, and then right click. And then you open up something here called fly through. And that will generate your fly through images. So once the study has been loaded into the fly through application, the computer will go and segment out the colon. In this case, it actually did a pretty good job. So you can go here and you can always edit it. So let's say I thought this part was colon and the computer missed it. You just simply click on it and it will include it within your fly-through window. Alternatively, if the computer assigns something to be colon that is not, you can always go through and click it, and the computer will get rid of it. So now it thinks that the colon is this segment of small bowel. We'll click back on the colon and get rid of our small bowel image there. Once you have your colon segmented out with what you think the uh, colon should be, then you simply click Next, and you will have a center line created. That will take you from the rectum in a fly-through 3D manner all the way to the cecum. So 
you just click OK if you're happy with the center line. Alternatively, if you want to, you can go in and you can move the center line off axis or to include other things uh, if the computer missed it. But usually, the computer generated algorithm does a very good job at finding that center line. Once you're happy with the center line, you click OK, and it will bring up a new window. So once you're loaded up for a 3D fly through, you simply go to the Cine button here in the bottom right of the screen and click forward and you can toggle through the 3D virtual colonoscopy. We're looking for polyps, specifically ones that are more than six millimeters in size. As you can see here, we're going anti-grade, but if we paused it, you can click this backwards arrow and then you can go retrograde. I usually go through the entire colon once anti-grade and once retrograde. That's the advantage of CT colonography above optical colonoscopy is that you can look at it from both vantage points with the CT scan. If we're going too fast, you can slow it down. If we're going too slow, you can speed it up and go at whatever pace you're comfortable with. Once you're done looking on the supine study, in the top left aspect of the image, there's a large one and two. You just click next volume and you will switch to the next path. Uh, in this case, we're now looking at the prone images. Let's say you found a polyp. If you wanted to mark it, we'll just stop arbitrarily somewhere. Then you can look here on your right lower hand corner and see that we are 157 centimeters at this point from the rectum. So if I found a polyp here, I would simply right click, go to my distance tool, measure a polyp, and then report it as being 157 centimeters from the anal canal.